W. Curtis Preston from Tribit TV. I'm sitting here with Madge Meyer, the author of The Innovator's Path, How Individuals, Teams, and Organizations Can Make Innovation Business as Usual. Thanks a lot for taking the time to talk today. You're welcome. So, I'm honored to be here. So I uh, I saw you, you they selected you to, to introduce Tarkin. You must yes. be uh, somebody special. Well, I know Tarkin <laughs> for many years, and he wanted to... Uh, warm up the audience mm -hmm. in the morning, mm -hmm. and obviously, talking you don't need to introduce him. Everyone knows him, right? Right. right. So I did. He said he give me a few minutes, just a couple minutes on the stage. So I decided to number one congratulate him. Today is a year anniversary of Next Center. Right. Talkin become a CEO last year, mm -hmm. and second one is. When he became CEO, he took my book to the market a month earlier than Wiley planned. Mm. They planned September, and he wanted to buy for his uh, attendees. Uh -huh. So he took to the market early. So my book is a year anniversary. Now, why that's so significant? Because Tarkin, I interview many leaders and innovators in my book, and he was the first one I interviewed him. Mm -hmm. He also endorsed my book. Gotcha. So, and so you didn't get it just because you wore the right color? I didn't know uh, Next Center's color at all. I oh, never really? even thought you about it. You just happened to wear this color well, and it just fit right in. I, what happened is I was going to wear red uh -huh. because I know I have a chance to have a picture taken with Hillary right. Clinton and Secretary Clinton. And uh, one of my friends said, no, you cannot wear red because it's a Republican. It's a Republican She's color. Democrat. I said, oh, my God, now what do I do, right? Yeah. And then I took out a lot of different suit, And this one, my husband just fell in love with this. He said, yeah, you wear this one. This is not red. This is orange. It was, it was uh, kismet. Uh, you know, it was... Uh, it's it was, a fate. It's a yeah, luck. exactly. Yeah. So, so you know, I, I took a quick look here. haven't had a chance to, to read it mm -hmm. as of yet. Uh, but it, it seems like it comes from your experience from all the way back to your yes. IBM days, which yes. actually with NASA. NASA. Sounds like. I started my career as a scientific programmer mm -hmm. and working on the last three flights of Gemini. That's how I met my husband. He did the ground simulation. I did the onboard programming software. Uh -huh. And uh, uh, I learned a lot of the discipline, forward-looking innovation right. during this assignment and uh, carry through my whole career. Number one is the always look for new technology, right? Second one is zero defect execution. Because when I got that on that project, this uh, project manager said, Madge, if you make one little mistake, mm -hmm. astronauts could die. Right. As a young person, it really scared me. Mm. And so I worked really hard, make sure there was no error at all. And I'm very happy. All my flights, I did the programming. It was flawless. And, and so when you when you wrote this, uh, th there was a story you told me earlier where they said you wanted to book, write a book on innovation, and you said, no, let me do it right. this way. Uh, when Wiley was uh, the executive editor of Wiley, was in the audience, one of my speeches. And at the end, he gave me a contract, basically. He said, I like your content, the platform, and the way you deliver the message. I made little joke about my background, came from Shanghai, China, from Hong Kong, and to this country, and all the story connected to why I was there. When I gave the speech that time, I was the executive vice president, chief innovation officer for State Street Bank. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I thought about it, because innovation, you change all the time. There's always new idea. I thought by the time I finished writing, it's going to be old. Mm -hmm. So it's not idea because everyone is innovator. Mm -hmm. You always can do better. You always have new idea. It's what kind of a discipline you really need to be really successful and all those skills that you need. In my book, I have eight major disciplines. Obviously, there are more, but these are the key. Listen. You got to be a good listener. Lead a sense of tomorrow, a vision. Once you have that, how do you position the company or yourself, right? How do you promote? That's so underrated by a lot of technology people. Or people really are smart, they're not good presenters. It's not what you say, how you say it, mm -hmm. who you say to, when you say that these are all very important, right? And then connect, networking, right? And a commit. Now many people cannot commit 
because the fear of failure. Because their company, I you know, took the job and people say, don't make any change, you'll be fired mm-hmm. if the change fail. So people are afraid of change. But uh, all my career, I say, you don't take a dumb risk. You take a calculated risk. You know the risk factor. Mm-hmm. But you got to take that risk to make a change, make an impact to the world. Right? And then once you have all these, you want to execute. Japanese people have a saying, say, if you have a vision, you don't execute, it's a daydream. Hmm. But if you only execute, you have no vision, it's a nightmare. <laughs> so you need both. Right? You need a gotcha. vision, you right. know how to. to Once execute, many people figure, I just made the change. And say, I'm going to relax, take it a little easy. And in my book, I say, you can. Evolve is my last chapter you got to continue making change. Otherwise, if you are not better, you're not good anymore. Well, listen, thank you very much for taking the time to talk today. Thank you. Again, this is uh, Madge Meyer, the author of The Innovator's Path, available at a bookstore near you, and Absolutely. I assume Amazon. Amazon, Hawaii. Yes. Thanks uh, for uh, checking us out. Make sure to check out our other videos on TrueBit.tv.